Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Indian PM Modi lays foundation stone of Air Force Station in Gujarat inaugurates Defence Expo. US says it expects sustained action against terrorist groups from Pakistan. And orphans in war ravaged Afghanistan yearn for care and peace. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday laid the foundation stone of an Air Force station in Gujarat state with an aim to give impetus to the defence sector as he inaugurated the Defence Expo 2022 in Gandhinagar city. He also launched the mission Dev Space to develop innovative solutions for the defence forces in the space domain through industry and startups. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid the foundation stone of an Air Force station in Gujarat state's Disa on Wednesday with an aim to give impetus to the defence sector as he inaugurated the Defence Expo 2022 in Gandhinagar city. The Prime Minister also launched the mission Deaf Space to develop innovative solutions for the defence forces in the space domain through industry and startups. He said this was the first defence expo in which only Indian companies were participating with only made in India defence equipment on display. It provides a glimpse of capability and possibility of India in one single frame. Deaf Expo 2022 ka नए भारत की ऐसी भव्य तस्वीर खींच रहा है जिसका संकल्प हमने अमृतकाल में लिया है इसमें राष्ट्र का विकास भी है राज्यों का सहभाग भी है इसमें युवा की शक्ति भी है Defence Expo 2022 marks the 12th edition of the annual event, which aims to promote entrepreneurship in the field of defence innovations. It also marks the celebration of one year of the formation of seven new defence companies carved out of the erstwhile Ordnance Factory Board. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Wednesday paid homage to the victims killed in the 2008 terror attacks in India's Mumbai as he arrived in the country for a three-day visit. The UN chief said fighting terrorism should be a global priority for every country. Fighting terrorism should be a global priority for every country, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres said on Wednesday as he paid homage to the victims killed in the 2008 terror attacks in India's Mumbai city. Gutteris, who is on a three-day visit to India, visited the Memorial Museum for 2611 victims at the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel, where he laid a wreath and saw photographs of the attacks. India and the United States accuse Hafiz Said, the founder of the Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba group, of being the mastermind of the attacks, in which 166 people, including six Americans, were killed. The long survivor of the militant squad, Pakistani national Ajmal Kassab, was hanged in 2012. Terrorism is absolute evil. And terrorism has no room in today's world. So I feel deeply moved to be here, where one of the most barbaric terrorist acts in history took place, where 166 people lost their lives. Gutteris later addressed an event at the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai, where he sought India's support in mobilizing G20 nations to help out developing countries saddled with debt, with three of India's neighbours already seeking IMF loans as their economy struggle. The UN chief was also scheduled to meet India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar later in the day and attend an event with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday. 
India's opposition Congress party on Wednesday declared veteran leader Malika Arjun Kharge as its new chief after he secured a massive win over his opponent Sashi Tharoor. He is the first person from outside the influential Nehru Gandhi family to hold the beleaguered party's presidency in 24 years. India's opposition Congress party on Wednesday declared veteran leader Malika Arjun Kharge its new chief the first person from outside the influential Nehru Gandhi family to hold the beleaguered party's presidency in 24 years. Kharge, an 80-year-old from the lowest rung of India's caste system, is seen as a Gandhi family loyalist. Congress workers were seen dancing to the beats of drums and exchanging sweets after he won 7,897 votes, defeating former UN diplomat Shashi Tharoor, who bagged 1,072 votes. Kharge thanked party members and also congratulated Shashi Tharoor for a successful election and discussed with him the idea of taking the party forward. Congress President ke chunao ke safal ayojan ke liye my party ke sabhi delegates, senior leaders, workers aur jo koi bhi is कार्यक्रम से जुड़े हैं उन सब को मैं धन्यवाद करता हूं आप सब ने डेमोक्रेसिक प्रोसेस में हिस्सा लेकर कांग्रेस को मजबूत किया है मेरे साथी श्री शशि तरूर को भी शुभकामना देता हूं the 137-year-old Congress party hopes to revive its flagging fortunes with a new leader after losing two general elections and control of some state assemblies to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party. Disgruntled senior party members have in recent months challenged the party's working under its interim president, Sonia Gandhi, who took charge after her son, Rahul Gandhi, resigned following the party's loss to the BJP in a 2019 general election. Moving on. After US President Joe Biden's remarks that Pakistan is one of the most dangerous nations in the world, Washington has once again reiterated that it expects sustained action against terrorist groups from Pakistan. Ties between Pakistan and the US, once close allies, have just started to warm after some years of frosty relations. U.S. Department Deputy Spokesperson Vedant Patel on Tuesday said that Washington seeks a strong partnership with Pakistan on counterterrorism and expects sustained action against all militant and terrorist groups. During a press briefing, Patel said that few countries have suffered from terrorism like Pakistan and have a shared interest in combating threats to regional instability and regional security like the Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan TTP. Ties between Islamabad and Washington, once close allies, have just started to warm after some years of frosty relations, mostly due to concerns about Pakistan's alleged support of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Pakistan denies this support. A uh, few countries have uh, suffered from terrorism like Pakistan and have a shared interest in combating threats uh, to regional instability uh, and regional security like the TTP. Uh, we seek a strong partnership with Pakistan on counterterrorism and expect sustained action uh, against all militant and terrorist groups, and we look forward to the cooperative efforts to eliminate all regional and global terrorist threats. Patel, however, refrained from responding to questions about the U.S. ambassador to Pakistan being summoned by Pakistan Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari over President Biden's recent remarks. Biden this past weekend said that Pakistan may be one of the most dangerous nations in the world, adding that he thought so as Pakistan has nuclear weapons without cohesion. Bilawal said he didn't think the decision to summon the U.S. ambassador would negatively affect relations with the United States and said officials could address any specific concerns Washington had on the nuclear program. Scores of students clashed with police in Sri Lanka's Kelanaya on Tuesday as they condemned the government for arresting individuals involved in protests under the Prevention of Terrorism Act and demanded the reappeal of the legislation. These students also played a key role in the protest that led to the ouster of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in July. 
Hundreds of students clashed with police in Kelania, a suburb of Sri Lankan capital Colombo, on Tuesday as they condemned the government for arresting individuals involved in protests under the Prevention of Terrorism Act (PTA) and demanded the repeal of the legislation. The protesters wanted to march towards central Colombo but were stopped by riot police. Police was also seen detaining a number of protesters. The students belonging to the Inter-University Students Federation (IUSF) also played a key role in the protests that led to the resignation of former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa in May and forced his brother, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, to flee the country before resigning two months later over the worst economic crisis. IUSF convener Vasantha Modalige and convener of the Inter-University Buddhist Monks Union Siridama Thero have been under detention for two months under the PTA. Meanwhile, to cope with the steep oil bill that deepened Sri Lanka's worst financial crisis in decades, the country approved a legislation on Tuesday to let companies from oil-producing nations import and sell fuel and reduce reliance on the country's meagre dollar supplies. The island nation of 22 million people is caught in the throes of a severe foreign exchange shortage that has left it struggling to import sufficient essentials including diesel, petrol, medicine, fertilizer and food. Children in orphanages in Afghanistan have expressed that they yearn for care and peace in their country where tens of thousands of civilians have been killed in unending conflicts for more than 40 years. Afghanistan's deepening economic crisis since the Taliban takeover has also taken its toll on the country's orphanages with no international aid. Hundreds of children at the Taya Ahmed Khan orphanage in Kabul yearn for care and peace in Afghanistan where tens of thousands of civilians have been killed in wars that have ravaged the country for more than 40 years. The 189 children at the orphanage from areas of armed conflicts have not lived normal lives as they have seen homes destroyed and family members and friends losing their lives in the protracted fighting. Violence, bombings and devastation has inexorably traumatized them, leading to bitterness and sadness. Each one of them wants to achieve a noble profession in life, including doctor or teacher. But say this seems like a distant dream as of now. Afghanistan's deepening economic crisis since the Taliban takeover has also taken its toll on the country's orphanages with no international aid. Abdul Mubin, director of the charity facility, said they urgently need support for running the orphanage. Currently, the food is being provided by the United Nations Children's Fund. Owing to favorable weather conditions, the production of walnuts has been in abundance this year in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory, raising hopes of a better turnover amongst both growers and sellers. Kashmiri walnuts are well known for their superior quality and taste, which is why they are in high demand throughout the regional markets. Timely rainfall has increased the production of high-quality walnut crop in India's Jammu and Kashmir this season, raising hopes of a better turnover amongst both growers and sellers. For the past month, growers have been very busy harvesting the walnut crops. Kashmiri walnuts are well known for their superior quality and taste, which is why they are in high demand throughout the regional markets. Even tourists who visit the region always prefer to purchase large quantities of Kashmiri walnuts. This year, the rain has been very good. And as for this season, it has been very good for the fruits. It has been a very good season for the fruits. So, the quality of the fruits has increased from the hands. It has been a very good quality. The walnut is an accepted source of nutrients, particularly proteins and fatty acids, 
and is extensively used to make snacks and confectionery. Akhrot very tasty. उन्होंने मुझे honey में भी taste कराया है, which was also very tasty. मतलब very happy and I am taking it Delhi लेके जा रही हूँ. The horticulture sector is a major contributor to the economy of Jammu and Kashmir. Besides walnuts, other fruits such as apples, pears, and almonds are the major commercial crops of the Union territory. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsiaNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.